drag it over. Jiren Kuro recognizes that there's a drag event. It blows up the drag area. You put it on. You drop it on the Silverlight application. And the Silverlight application puts it in the document library for you. Uh, so you could definitely interact with lists pretty quickly. Did everybody get that, or did I say it too fast? That was cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you can definitely interact with lists and using SP services, which is on CodePlex, uh, it abstracts all the web services, it gives you direct access to those web services, and you can interact with any list or library. You can get user info if you want. You can get the current site context if you want. Uh, that, that's a definite myth. Uh, the final one is it has no real use in my environment because of um, X. People just like to make excuses. Um, <coughs> You can, I believe that you can quickly prototype and tweak web parts uh, before writing them in Visual Studio. So telling me that it has no real use in your environment doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I feel that if you can quickly prototype things without using Visual Studio, without deploying assemblies, and you can quickly test things, then it does have real use. And in some, in some environments where you can't deploy assemblies to the GAC or you can't deploy assemblies to the bin, jQuery may be the only answer or JavaScript may be the only answer. So. I, this 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 is a this is a common myth that I, that, that I don't want, that I don't follow. Why is it not going to the next slide? Okay, so I've, I've busted a couple of myths. Does anybody else have some myths they've heard about jQuery or things negative things they've heard about jQuery that maybe we can debunk right now? Anybody else questions about jQuery? No? Upgrading SharePoint. What? Upgrading SharePoint. Upgrading SharePoint. It's yes. 2010. Or any future upgrade. Any future upgrade. With jQuery? Well, so you've installed jQuery mm -hmm. code in your front end. That's the, that's the two slides. That's the, oh. then two slides from now. All right. Uh, he's he's actually got one of the topics. Uh, so people will say, well, you've deployed jQuery and it's great. It seems to be working fine, but it's it's actually not deployable. I, I don't I don't understand that. In, in in an environment where you have access to the file system, where you have access to version document libraries, how is it not deployable? You, have, you, you also have a solution architecture where you can deploy anything anywhere you want. Uh, you can also, and your, your solutions also have version numbers. Uh, there's absolutely no reason to think that it's not deployable. Like, you upload new versions as needed, you put it in a document library, turn on versioning and store multiple, store multiple versions, and you use metadata to keep track of information about those scripts. Like we're using this script now because this and this and this happened and this fix is here and this bug was corrected and you can always roll back. It's almost like a bug tracking system if you use a document library. So we're using script version 1.2. Uh, these are the fixes and this is why we're using it now. Uh, this is why we rolled back. This is why we did. Or if you want to be a little quicker and not use a document library, you can start on the file system. Uh, how many people are foolish? How many people are familiar with uh, WSPs and solutions in SharePoint. So you, you're familiar with deploying uh, JavaScript libraries to the layouts folder uh, for use or things like that. Uh, it wouldn't be that hard to version. You can, you can rename your files according to the version of the solution package. Add, add you know, feature versions even. Uh, it doesn't, it's, it's quite deployable. It is easy to maintain, but one of my favorite approaches is actually put everything in a document library. Because you have true versioning, you have true metadata uh, tracking, and you can keep information about why you're using those particular libraries. That's not always feasible. You're not going to always be able to create a library for your scripts. So doing it on the file system is quicker, but it's harder to keep track of the, uh, track of the versions. Also, you're going to stay in the site collection scope if you do that. Sorry? That your jQuery is going to stay in that site collection scope if you upload it in a library. If you choose a library deploy deployment option. Your jQuery is going to only work on that site collection. That site collection. Yeah, if you put it on the, well, that's a good point. If you put it on the file system, uh, it's a virtual folder, obviously. It can be accessed from any, any website, any site collection that has access to the layouts folder. So you're talking about one, uh, you know, maybe a website level or, or site collection level, or the other, this would be available globally. And it is quicker, because if you store a script in the document library, you're making a request to, you're making a, you're making a do, object request to the SharePoint, which is going to make a SQL request, which is eventually going to serve, which is eventually going to serve in a JavaScript file. For most people, that seems like a lot of overhead in order to get access to a JavaScript file. And what about putting it in TFS to keep the version in control? Put some rigor to the uh, process to keeping the version control in the, rather than the file system. Well, 
you that's that's that's, that's different. That's versioning for your uh, for your source safe. I'm talking about being able to keep track of it on the actual deployed server. Right. Okay. Um, that, obviously, T something like TFS. Uh, you can even use um, Tortoise SVN or whatever. Or, sorry, just SVN. Tortoise SVN is the client. Uh, you can use VSS, you can use whatever you like, uh, and keeping obviously keeping your track of information and why you're using particular libraries and why you're using particular version of JavaScript libraries is, is essential. So right. if you hit the page once, it's going to be cached in the browser. Sure. It's not going to be You still have to make that initial request, like just one. But yeah, just but one. think about it. You're making a SQL request for a JavaScript. Some people might think to themselves, that's just too much overhead. Just not. Just sure. Just one for that per user. Per user. <coughs> So you have 100, 100 people hit a, a document library, they request a JavaScript file, 100 requests to your SQL server. Call a CDN then. Sorry? So call Microsoft CDN and we just make one to them. <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. There's a, everybody's aware of that, right? Um, jQuery, you don't actually have to even have it on your system anymore. You can actually, there's a central repository Microsoft supports, and you could, that, but that also requires the, uh, Access. Uh, well, I think it's pretty maintainable. It's all about script placement. I think we just talked about that. Uh, one of my one of my pet peeves is putting the script source inside your content editor web parts. Uh, it's not maintainable if you hard code hard code your scripts in your master pages. Can you imagine going back to all your master pages and having to rewrite a new script version uh, every time you or or if the script name changes. Uh, you can't. Even, it's that's tricky. Don't do it that way. Um, my personal preference, again, is deploy scripts to a central script document library or to fill the file system with a solution package. Uh, I think the second one is quicker, it's easier, uh, and uh, like this gentleman pointed out, it's, it's available globally on your, on your site. Uh, one thing... Maybe an addition there. If you want to have it globally throughout the farm, you can use the additional page at, page at control and you can inject your JavaScript there and it will be... Does everybody you know what an additional page head control is? You have it. He, he's talking about delegate controls. Any, anybody know what a delegate control is? A delegate control is. Okay, I'll, I'll quickly touch on what he just said because he brought it up. Um, every master page in a SharePoint environment has a bunch of, of placeholders. Not the placeholders you're thinking of, but control placeholders. And one of the placeholders that's available on every single page in a, in a SharePoint in a SharePoint site is called the additional page head control. And you can actually inject your own controls into that that placeholder control, which which will make you make your 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 JavaScript uh, your JavaScript file be available on every single page in SharePoint. Uh, look up Delta controls; they're actually quite 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 useful in SharePoint, uh, and more people should be using them because it makes things a lot easier. So this is why you bring the MVPs out bring up you know the more complicated topics. I actually did a presentation on delicate controls at SharePoint Saturday. It's a good one. Uh, moving from environments from 2007 to 2010, uh, I've had no problems with it. Uh, it just seems to work for me. Um, one thing you have to make sure of is this. If you're using jQuery to access lists, use the list names, not the GUIs. They change when you upgrade uh, or you migrate or things like that. Uh, for the most part, it does work identically in 2007, 2010, uh, but things are different in 2010. You have a ribbon now. Everything's modal. Everything's AJAX friendly. So you're going to have to you're going to have to tweak your JavaScript uh, jQuery libraries to take advantage of all these things. The, the ribbon, the modal pop-ups, and things like that. Has anybody used the modal dialogues in SharePoint yet uh, and interacted with them? No. One guy. I've got something to say. So. You mean, for instance, you're up, you, want, you have a document library, you want to upload a new file, and you get a modal pop-up with the upload dialog, right? Sure. It's actually an iframe. It's an iframe within another iframe. There's two iframes. Two iframes loading. It goes pretty deep. Regular loading an ASP page inside that. It is. That's why you can actually post back inside the modal dialog. It's, it's, it's quite smart the way they did it. Um, yeah. So I've been trying to pass data through these multiple levels of modal dialogs to it's get to a final pain. stage. And it's a pain in the butt. It's a pain. Um, one thing you could do is you can get, oh, this is another topic, you can get a hold of that, um, the current dialogue that's open, the mobile dialogue that's open, this is really off topic, this has nothing to do with jQuery, this is We can talk about it after. You want to talk about it after? Sure. Okay. Just remember that question. Uh, the, the quick answer is, 
A reference to that modal dialog is present on the page at all times, so you can get access to it. And you can take the frame element and drop down into into the, into the page and drop things into the page that way. Another way to do it is uh, make a global object that stores the information you want to store and have the modal dialog transverse upwards in, into the frame element where the modal dialog is and grab that and grab that global property. Cool. I will try and answer that question less fast next time. Cool, thanks. <laughs> So is jQuery the answer to all your problems? No. Will it help? Yes. Uh, the thing you have to remember is it's still JavaScript. And you have to be careful when you use JavaScript to do a lot of things in SharePoint. Why? Um, it does expose business, business logic if you go deep enough. Uh, if you have business logic at the, at the client level. Uh, it executes on the client side. It can perform, perform slow if you're manipulating large amounts of data. That's unavoidable. If you're manipulating thousands of items on the client side using JavaScript, it's going to go slow down. I can't, I can't really think of a library that's quick at manipulating thousands and thousands of lines of data. Um, you can't do everything with jQuery. Uh, has anybody worked with timer jobs? Obviously, that's not. There's no client. There's no client. There's no client side, you can't do it. Workflow, same thing. Fin handler, same thing. You can't elevate the privileges for the user from a script, from, a, from JavaScript. Uh, and you can't is, easily interact with all business systems. You, it's really just for, I, I recommend jQuery for you know, doing modal dialogues, uh, for interacting with the DOM in an efficient way, manipulating small amounts of data like you would with an image gallery and things like that. Um, it can't do everything. I, I just want to stress that. It, it, but it does help, especially from a client perspective. Um, has everybody worked with these things? Timer jobs, workflows, vid handlers, things like that? Anybody done a timer job before? All right, I'm just trying to get a feel for uh, what people have done here. So the last thing I want to stress is uh, jQuery is just another tool. Uh, put it in your tool kit. Put it in there. Use it. Figure out when the best time to use it is. Uh, it, it will make your UI sore, I guess. That sounds kind of like a slogan for an ad for jQuery. Like, jQuery, it gives you wings, like Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Understand the limitations. jQuery can't do everything. Like I just highlighted, it can't do everything, but it will help. And use it wisely. Um, I prefer to use jQuery for um, things that have to have a nice looking facade, uh, for things that have to have an interactive experience for the user. And that's why we use JavaScript most of the time, right? That's why HTML5 is becoming so popular, because it gives you it gives you that really interactive feel. And that's why, you know, Ajax, Web 2.0, whatever it was called, became so popular so quickly. I'm gonna talk about the best third party component that I'm aware of for, for jQuery and SharePoint. If you guys know any other third party components, feel free to talk about them. Uh, this is this is about SP services, which is on Codeplex. If you're going to start developing with jQuery and SharePoint, go to Codeplex, get SP services. It's going to make your life so much easier. Um, it's basically a library which I think you said this word for word actually. <laughs> this is a JavaScript library which abstracts SharePoint's web services and makes them easier to use. I think that's what you said exactly. I've had a lot of conversations with Mark Anderson. Fair enough. Um, Everybody's aware of the uh, SharePoint web services that are out there, correct? Has everybody used the SharePoint web services before? Who's used SharePoint web services before? Uh, if you were to describe your... Uh, oh, sorry. You want me to ask you? Go ahead. Give me a face. If you were to describe uh, your experience with SharePoint web services, how would you describe it? This uh, SMS. Yeah, it's this SMS. Anyone else? That's just one people web service to use. Anybody else use the, list, uh, the SharePoint web services? Rather than use the API. You'd rather use the API. That's what I was looking for. It, may, it, is, it is quite cumbersome. You have to know Camel. You have to, you have to know how to pass in the, the, the soap envelope into it. It's, 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 a bit of a, it's a bit of a pain in the butt. But with this, with SharePoint SP Web Services, uh, it basically puts it in a light, tight little package for you. It's basically like using the API. And it, again, it works entirely on the client, it, not on the server side. Okay, so what can this library do? Uh, pretty much anything the web services can do. Uh, get list items, add,